The Align Assembly constraints define the relationship between two selected items. Constraining parts in an assembly also limits or disables the freedom of movement within an assembly. Typically, three constraints are needed to fully define and constrain a part, but in many cases, parts need to move. For example, the plates in this injection mold assembly need to move up and down along alignment rods. If they were fully constrained, this could not happen. Attaching the top plate to this injection mold assembly provides a good example of the difference between the alignment constraint and the mate constraint. The top plate of this injection mold assembly is upside down to the left. It needs to be secured to this other upper plate in the same way these two lower plates are joined. The top of this assembly is a mirror image of the bottom half. These two support blocks must come together just like the blocks in the bottom half. Start by selecting the Quick Constraint Mode button on the sidebar, then select the surfaces of the two blocks. This aligns these two surfaces and the Flip button will flip that top plate right over. That Align constraint is now a Mate constraint. That removes one degree of freedom. The two front surfaces of these blocks need to be aligned too, so select them next. Not exactly what we had in mind, is it? That top plate needs to spin around 180 degrees, so select the Angle button. This item defaults to 90 degrees, so enter 0 and click it again. We've just taken care of 2 degrees of freedom. There's one left. This rod needs to be aligned with this hole, so select them next. This plate is now fully constrained. It's not moving in any direction until you want it to, which brings us to the next screen. Sometimes you want to allow movement. To do this, right-click on the constraint related to that movement and click on Suppress. Notice the constraint is still there, but now it's grayed out. Sometimes you may wish to do this in sequence as shown here. To unsuppress constraints, right click on the constraint again and left click to remove the check mark. To edit assembly constraints, click on the plus sign to the left of a listed constraint to expand the listing and see the items being constrained. At this point, you could replace one or both of these items as part of the editing process. Right-click on the constraint label and select Edit from the menu. The Assembly Constraint dialog box appears. Any of the values in this box can be changed. You can also select different items to replace the ones in the Items to Constrain box. In this example, the offset value 0 is being replaced by the value which is the maximum opening distance for the upper portion of this mold set. For study purposes. In this tutorial, you learned when and how to apply linear quick constraints. You also learned how to suppress and edit constraints to assist in the design process.